In about 1990, an archaeologist found evidence on Williams Island of human habitation going back 14,000 years. And here on the campus, 9,000 years. That goes way beyond the Cherokee. I enjoy thinking about Americans from that era living and moving and having their being on this land. The first education on this hill was Indians sitting on a log telling their sons how to hunt, stalk animals, and to clean hides. Baylor is a community, a tribe, that walks adolescents through adolescence by accompanying them and apprenticing them and caring about them. I think the whole purpose of education is to open the heart. That's what watching the river does. The river is eternal, ever-changing, but always the same. That day when Mr. Baylor got Mr. Lupton to consent to drive out here and look at the site, what a view they must have seen. Mr. Baylor found this place, and at some point he got Mr. Lupton to join him in an expedition up this hill, and then school opened in September of 1915. Mr. Pennington taught Latin, and he would jump up and run out the door with us, and we'd run across the quadrangle, and we'd stand and look down the river. And he would say, look at that vista. Gentlemen, look at that vista. These kids are very likable. They want to do well, they're fun, they're inquisitive, they keep us young. Being a door parent was fun. They'd come in and drink Gatorade and make peanut butter sandwiches and use the phone and watch TV and my door was open. We're here as kind of an extension of their own family whenever they need it. The students really enjoy being surrounded by a community of faculty and dorm parents. Children tend to live up to or down to the expectations placed upon them. And if they're expected to do their best, they will. Baylor saved my life. It always seemed like there was a Baylor teacher or coach somewhere around in my life to help me make a good decision. But what I remember most about my experience as a student here was that people loved me. The relationship between student and teacher is more important now because of technology. Today, because they are bombarded with so much information, they can't dig deeper, they can't stop and think about things. By studying literature, by learning how to read closely, you have to slow down. I want to teach them to discover things about themselves, just learn more about who they are as people. With To Kill a Mockingbird, you reread it and you realize more things that you hadn't realized before. I really want to be an author when I grow up and write some books. They're not kids anymore, but they're not adults yet. Just dealing with the adolescent psyche is another important part of what I do. I try to inspire them to discover the mathematics, and so I'll challenge them with problems to solve. Some of these kids are afraid to get things wrong because all their life they've gotten everything right, and for them to get something wrong is a shock. It's time to begin that process of learning, of falling, of picking yourself up, and a foreign language is a great place to do that. I have a lot of close relationships with my teachers, both inside the classroom and also outside doing extracurriculars and sports and trips. It's a Baylor family. It's not just a school that your kids go to. The Romans had a concept of a sound mind in a sound body. The famous book written by Jim Hitt was It Never Rains After 3 O'Clock, which means that track and football practice and nothing else was canceled because it rained. We won 12 state championships out of 18 my final year's board chair. I like football because of all the ruckus. I'm pretty small, but I like ramming into people and all that stuff. It's just fun being with other people and finding our tribe and finding our home and our family. That is the key to being human in a lot of ways. We get to see that light in students' eyes. 
Ta 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 One, two, three, and then the drums. I can hear it now like it was yesterday. I last heard it in 1959 when I was a senior. I took to it like duck to water. I like structure. I like uniforms. They dropped the military. And parents were very upset. You know, this is not going to be the old Baylor. So what could we do that would replace that? And that's how the walkabout came about. The motto of the walkabout is making kids uncomfortable since 1976. You get immediate feedback in the wilderness if you do something. If you have a correct draw stroke or an incorrect draw stroke in the middle of a rapid. The first four or five days, the question is, who the hell thought this up? Their last day, they're thinking, if I can do this, I can do college. If I can do this, I can do anything. When you feel change coming and transition coming, there's always some uncertainty and a little fear that goes with that. But the love of Baylor connects us all, and I think that's what's going to help us succeed and help us continue to stay ahead of the curve. Here I was, a 14-year-old adolescent, and this place I'd always wanted to be a part of was now accepting girls. Now that I'm on the board of trustees, and I'm a graduate, and I'm a mother, I'm like, wow, that was a huge decision they made over a very short period of time. The change that females on this campus has wrought to me is good beyond measure. As I look to the future, I see a wholesome religious and spiritual atmosphere. I see a wholesome racial and ethnic atmosphere. One of the most important things as we celebrate 100 years on the Hill was that in May of 1916, the honor code was adopted here at Baylor. You keep honest, you do what you need to do, you do your work. It defines the character of the school. The inspiration this provides is still in play every day here. We're just beginning. A world-class faculty, a campus that only God himself could have dreamed up. It's really a gift every day to all of us and our kids and our kids' kids and those that came before us. I love today's students. They're the answer to our country's and the world's ills because students today see so much more than just themselves. I want them to be happy. I want them to find joy in creating. I want them to find joy in serving. I want them to go out and be happy to do good in the world. That's what watching the river does. The river is eternal, ever changing, but always the same. So watch the river and walk the hill. Great work. Keep it up, everybody. Right.